Once again, this is video two. Meeting with the Integrity Board of the New Orleans Police Department, October 18th, 2019. They're supposed to be, <laughs> they have supposedly investigated the non-investigation of the non-investigation of the non effing investigation of my son going through a solid glass hotel window. One call. Never he heard a fight, he heard a crash, he heard the breaking of glass. He went out on the balcony. He saw Fahad Khan out on the balcony where Seth has landed, messing with the body. He has bloody hands, bloody face, and bloody knuckles. That's on the body cam video. He said this to Gabrielle Lewis's body cam video. And they, in the report, barely took his statement. I found him finally on Facebook in May. Mm -hmm. And we've been talking ever since. He says that he was down there, told all the police officers, why aren't you searching his car? Fahad's car was parked next to Stephen James's car. And he came, he was out, then he went back up to his room to take a shower to get ready for work. He took a picture of Seth laying on the balcony, which Arlen Barnes has. And the couch is pushed, the balcony couch is pushed over Seth's legs. Somebody. I'm assuming Fahad Khan moved the couch looking for something. I mean, so this is just, this is what agitates the hell out of us. The security, mm -hmm. Stephen James gave me the security guard, Miss Sheila's number. Miss mm -hmm. Sheila has talked to me. She said, I was, I was late to the scene. I wasn't there on the site at the time, but I came in because they called me from the security company and said, don't come. We've had a big snafu and go get everybody breakfast and come. She said, I got breakfast, I came in an hour later than I usually do, but all I know is that guy was in the lobby and he's running in and out of the lobby and the patio, the balcony, looking for Seth, looking for shoes. I don't know why he would be looking for shoes, but he's looking for shoes. You know, he's looking for my son's shoes because they went out the window with my son. Mm -hmm. Fahad gave us back eventually, because they didn't take it, Seth's phone and shoes and shirt. Fahad had it for 18 days. Scallon told us that, and that is one of those complaints, is that Scallon said, that, I said, why didn't you take Seth's phone? How would you not think of that as evidence? There were so many phones in the room, I didn't know whose was whose. Mm -hmm. There was nothing I could do with the phone. Mm -hmm. Of course, then the phone wasn't searched. And so, of course, the phone wasn't searched. And, and big chunks of the phone <coughs> clearly erased during the time. From Arlen Barnes knows every bit of this. Mm -hmm. I've given Arlen Barnes access to my entire email history with Scallon, when I thought Scallon was working as a detective for us, with Theo Kent, when I thought Theo Kent was working as a detective for us, um, with Nick Gurman. He has access to all of that. You know, it's very disturbing about the phone records. I don't know if they've ever broken into these phones again. I dropped them off at the, the, uh, at the homicide. And I gave that phone to that man. I said, look. When I gave the phone to the man, I said, look, this is all I got. And I know that someone has, has taken stuff all this snapshot. This is all I got. Mm -hmm. And they're un they didn't get into the Snapchat and all that stuff until we went down there a month later and said, can you get into the phone? A month later. Just whatever it was later. Mm -hmm. They hadn't even been into the phone yet. She broke into the phone. Mm -hmm. She got it back. Once we got into the phone, and I understand it's hard to get into these phones, but only under us nagging them did they finally subpoena Snapchat and some of this stuff. And it was... That's it, a different phone. That's Fahad's account. So only under duress from us did they get into the social media stuff. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I know the exact one that they got into, yes. but under duress from us. Mm -hmm. And then they said it's been blanked and we don't know what to do with it. And yeah. it back. This indicates that Scallon was only there as a follow-up investigation. I, what does that even mean? Uh, I'm asking you, Ms. Richardson. Do you know what that means? I'm sorry, ma'am. Well, this says that Scallon was assigned to Seth's case for follow-up investigation. What does it mean? That he was assigned to do conduct a follow-up investigation. What is the follow-up? I mean, like, where's the so primary happens, investigation? So what happens is the initial, when we get called out on the scene, um, that's the initial investigation. So an initial report is written. Who did the initial six. report? 
Oh, I'll pull that up. I'll, I'll check in to listen and see. Do we have the full case? I need the full case file. Do you have that? I, I can grab that. Thank you. Because that'll have everything. That'll have the all that documentation in it. Um. So an initial report is written. Um, and then that, so that's so that's from El Louis, New Louisiana State Police. <clears throat> They shouldn't have been the initial. Uh, but they were report. there for thirty minutes. They were there, but they would not be the. They would not write the report. Mm -hmm. they, they See what the problem the I have right there with that. I don't. I mean, you can tell me what your problem is. Well, they're acting as New Orleans Police Department. They're coming in, contracted by you guys, right, for a busy weekend. Nick Gernon says, on his well, it was the next month. It was November. Mm -hmm. It was his uh, letter to somebody. We hired. For, for the whatever that it was in Duty November fast. the um, no it was uh, whatever event you had in November this was Bayou Classic Bayou that's what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. Bayou Classic we hired 400 additional officers so these Louisiana State Police they didn't just come off the highway so, so they came in this. so when he says and I'm not sure why he used that exact verbiage or terminology but the North Police Department does not hire state police. Um, it is an agreement between the two agencies. When we have special events, they assist us with by sending in troopers to assist us with the to help us cover French Quarter okay. and those areas downtown. So we're not hiring them. They're not paid by the New Orleans Police Department. Well, if they're going to show just, up first, putting y'all in quite their, a situation yes, if they don't even have to write a report. I understand that, but that is just that their assignment. So it's more so as their. The agency between the two is an agreement between the New Orleans Police Department and the Louisiana State Police, just as they do with every other agency and parish in the in the state. They, excuse me, they offer support. They they offer manpower. Um, well, they don't even know that they should separate witnesses. I'm sorry. So they can show up and they can pretty much do whatever they want and not follow the New Orleans Police Department or. Um, rules and, and not have any oversight i mean or they're, they're not following the standard policies like you have like i know if you go to any room you got to turn the camera on correct well they don't have to wear cameras they do not and so they come into a, a death yes, and, and uh, where there's a big guy with a bloody nose and a tesla a man out the door mm -hmm. and and uh cocaine in the room yes sir. and i think most people would have separated those folks out wouldn't allow them to collude together wouldn't allow them to snapchat so they're not following any of the, the rules and regulations and protocols. And we don't even know their names. You guys have set together. We can't find their names. Uh, um, maybe you guys can, but we have not been able to find their names. Mm -hmm. And so, <coughs> I mean, of the troopers who were on the scene, mm -hmm. the initially responded to the call. Mm -hmm. So you see our yes. problem. Mm -hmm. um, and then three homicide detectives show up, supposedly in Scallon's report, before Scallon gets there, and they come and go. Scallon says... Scallon said to us, essentially, the guy said, this is a suicide, we're out of here. There's nothing to see here, we're moving on. That was the essential communication. Well, they said, we've there. got to go to young greatness. Well, Un but essentially, there's, this is a kid out the window, there's nothing to see here, let's move on. Mm -hmm. That was it. And so Scallon, that's when Scallon tells us, you need to go lobby with this homicide group mm -hmm. and get these, or actually it was the coroner's office, and so the whole narrative that's made in the moment, mm -hmm. this is a suicide, which set the tone for everything and all this revisionist stuff that's coming out of Marshall Scallon, Mr. Scallon and these others. And instead of looking at it with new eyes, what could have happened here? That narrative is set from the beginning and all of these things. Can you imagine? I mean, so add Gail Johnson's name to your list because Scallon gave me his email contact. I thought he was a medical examiner at the coroner's office, but he got every email to him. and Gail this, Johnson. Gail Johnson. Gail A G A Y. I thought it was Gay Nell, but it's G A Y E L L A Johnson. Detective. Detective. Rael Johnson. Rael. His name is Rael. Is that who you're talking about? Okay. Well, that's not what it says on. We don't. Have it. He's with NOP. Yeah. We don't have a Gay Yow Johnson or a Ray Yow Johnson. All right. If that's who you're Well, to. anyway, he received all my emails. The email address that his name is G.A. Johnson. His email is G.A. Johnson. At no, at, anyway. So we Scallon have, so, gave me his email. He said, please tell Ray. So I just want to make sure. So we have, we have a Greg Johnson and we have a Ray Yow Johnson. 
right. so I just I'm, I just want to okay. make sure which I one could be wrong two. it might not be Ray it's G.A. Johnson his email so that may be Greg Johnson okay you know, we got a friend of ours son killed himself a couple weeks ago and the police came to this it was a small town but you know what they, it's proportional right mm -hmm. proportional coverage it was pretty clear get the rifle put in his mouth and and they but they went through his phone. I'm sorry. They spent days going through his phone, doing all this investigation. Days. Mm -hmm. He says 99% chance suicide, 1% chance accidental. Mm -hmm. In my mind, you guys spent about 10 minutes deciding what this case was. With no evidence With, except gravity. And, you know, you spent, not you. I understand. Um, I understand, sir. On the scene, mm -hmm. I think Marshall Scow was bullied mm -hmm. uh, by these um, homicide guys, and something happened with these state police of these 30 minutes. That you have no right. You never get the straight story out at this point. You'll never get the straight well, story. And here's what I'm especially worried about: it's Nick Gernan. He told us in January he knew nothing about this. Gay, was it Gaynell? That's what I said to begin with. Gaynell. what I wrote down to begin with and then I thought I must have had it wrong because he never yeah. responded to any of the thousand emails so I'm I'll, I'll see who that I have that name She's I don't still, you don't have to know everybody we have to know everybody yeah no but that, um, I mean but in homicide I mean that just I don't know if it's back and no, I'm losing my train of thought here a little yes, bit. Sir. But you got 30 minutes in there you'll never get the straight story out of those cops on mm -hmm. never mm -hmm. never get that straight story but you got a bloody nose, you got cocaine in the room, you got a guy who's living, who's a known drug dealer. Scallon, when he finally did get in the Snapchat or on this, or whatever the social media on this kid con was, he said, he's a drug, he just looked at the, whatever he got, he said, he's a drug dealer, and we turned it over to North Carolina police. So you got a drug dealer, cocaine in the room, this kid is twice as big as my son, they've known each other for a long time. Uh, not and he's enemy, out, not and friends. He's out the window, and the only guy living is the one who tells the story. And how that got construed that fast into a suicide is beyond my understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's that's really the that hour. And he, you know, the other interesting thing is too. The other thing Scallon said to us was he was too hot. Uh, the survivor Con was too hot to tell us anything, mm -hmm. but he could contrive the story that it was a suicide, but he wouldn't talk about anything else. So he didn't say nothing. The girl was the only one that told the story. They were together for 30 minutes, Snapchatting and all this other stuff. And um, so uh, this is just not proper protocol. But I think when I told this to the homicide detectives, when I went down and met with them, and there were three or four of them in the room. Mm -hmm. They were visually disturbed by these things. And this is the same stuff. It's just yes. nothing's changed here that we're telling you guys. But they were visually, these were, they look like honorable men. And they were visually disturbed. And uh, I'm just going to put this in another light for just a moment. Absolutely. We came down here and we went and talked to FBI. Mm -hmm. Because this was such a, what the hell? Mm -hmm. What? What? That we went to the FBI. FBI told us, and we talked about a couple, we're talking about a couple things. Yes. This and these windows. People aren't supposed to go out of windows. Well, not without a lot of effort. And by whatever happened, it didn't take much. But what the FBI told us was, he said, incompetence could look just like corruption. And we also told him about these windows and our concern with these windows and the concern with the inspection. And I don't think there's any form of irony. I think related a year later, you're late, you're firing, laying off all the inspectors. We informed the FBI of our concern, and I got to believe this had something to do. It's just too coincidental. It's less than a year. Mm -hmm. And now you got a building laying out here in the street. So uh, something happened in that 30 minutes to an hour. It's not right. And you're never going to get the story straight at this point. Well, I want you to put this down in the record, too, that I'm concerned about Nick Gurney. Yes, ma'am, I want to get back to that. <clears throat> One moment. We're not naive to this place, you know. We lived here a long time, and I worked for that building right over there, Cherry Hospital, many, many years as a surgeon. So I saw the best 
some of the worst of the police, frankly. I saw some of that. Um, and 